Hi, welcome back to a new vlog. I'm trying to catch the last um, moments of some natural light in the window. Um, also with these beautiful flowers, birthday flowers. That one's a little droopy, but she's still beautiful. I feel like this vlog might be more spread out um, over a lo longer period of time because I'll be away this weekend um, to be with Ahad's family and I probably won't be vlogging there. So um, I will start to like uh, gather clips and then probably whenever you see this vlog in the future. Um, so sci-fi this like whole vlog making it's like talking to you in the future um from the future i just also wanted to say that i started reading blueberries um like i mentioned at the end of the vlog last vlog <clears throat> uh, blueberries by elena savage and i just finished the first essay this morning which is called yellow city this first essay is about um Savage going back to Lisbon in Portugal and it's 11 years after she was there and she was the victim of a um, sexual assault and like um, attempted rape um, and so she's basically on the search in Lisbon this time also, she's there for like a writing, um, re an artist residency, but she's also, she had to leave Lisbon before she got kind of the results of the trial after she filed to the tourist police um, 11 years ago, the whole situation. And so she's, it's kind of like her, her essay is like each day and like the journey and like the progression of trying to get the results of what this trial was because she wasn't there and what happened and it's also going a lot into memory trauma and also what happens to the memory when we're involved in traumatic events and how memory is not linear and also how it changes and is sort of can be formless not formless but um can pass through time and that we sort of assign these like posts signposts like through your life to kind of put your memory in an architecture she says um but memory so much of the time just doesn't work like that in a linear way and i i just felt that the particular portrayal of what happens to your <clears throat> your memory when it's been affected by trauma and how you mix details and you start to forget things or you switch details or, or things like that. I, I just found it so realistic and I, I mean, of course it's an essay, so it's, this is real life, but I, I just thought her, I think her writing is so striking, so strong, so, um, it's, it's, unbelievable really i i was annotating like highlighting on my kindle so much um and just this whole essay was like it it was like i was catching my breath after each <laughs> each paragraph kind of <laughs>
Elvira. I feel like I'm one of them. I should be part of this. It smells like what? Poop. Hi friends, <laughs> I was out of the city for the weekend, um, so I don't remember exactly what I was saying the last time that I actually talked to the camera. Who knows? I'm also hoping to get a new camera actually, because now I'm filming on my phone and it's fine and actually very, very easy, <laughs> but I, I feel like yeah, I want to continue doing this and I kind of was filming on my phone just as a kind of test to see if this whole booktube thing was anyway going to be something that I um, enjoyed to do and it very much is. So I think soon we might switch to another camera, which will be fun if that comes soon. I'm still reading Blueberries um, by Elena Savage. It's still rocking my world. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, I'm almost done with uh, one of the essays, so actually I think I'm gonna sit and read the rest of this essay and then come back and talk to you and maybe like read you a few passages that I just really, I'm highlighting a lot um, on my Kindle and definitely these essays are gonna have to be essays that I come back to and reread many times. Um, but maybe I'll read you like a few passages that I really enjoyed. Okay, I read a few more essays actually. <laughs> now I'm ready to talk. Um, wow, she is fucking crazy amazing. I thought I would read you just a passage that I've reread about three or four times just because I love everything about it. It's in an essay called Satellite. And this particular, like the context for this is that she's saying that um, that like when she was little and like she lived with her parents, neither of them much connected to like going to nature or land like outside of the city. And other than like a few walks through like nearby bush. Um, and so she's talking about that. And this is the passage she, she's, she writes. It may feel like a little bit out of context, but I don't want to try to explain it. I'm just, I just want to read it because I think, um, I'm just reading it to myself like many times and so I wanted to share it with you. She writes, But still I am scared of the bush because I never spent long enough there to feel at home, just as I am still scared of the ocean, just as I am scared when I am at home alone at night, no human noises next to me, and I think of my house, the house I rent, built long before I was born, and I imagine the reptiles around it sunning themselves and spiders and birds everywhere. And it's the painful thought, or perhaps it's just boring, that I'm too tender for nature, not tough enough to unwind amid the sounds and dangers of animal chaos. And while I'm not phobic about snakes, I am attacked by a snake in many of my dreams. But then I am told that these dreams are not about snakes at all, they're about men. And perhaps fear of nature is fear born of the sense that civilization was supposed to make things easier, and in many ways it does, but the cost is very high, maybe fatal, for nature as well as for women. And the snakes, which are a placeholder for masculine triumph over everything, is what is destroying me incrementally, is what is destroying, you know, nature. Yes, wow. Well, that's just like one of many crazy, crazy passages in this book. I also wanted to kind of reflect on something that I'm really connecting to in this book, which is that Savage is, you know, sometimes there are things that happen in your life, whether it's trauma related or whether it's just a moment where you can't put it into words, but you feel something in your body, which 
every person can relate to this feeling like you just feel something it's it's a very like visceral body feeling and you can't say it or describe it or even register it in your brain you just feel it um and that's common i think for all people but especially like as a dancer and which is what i do and my body is my tool <laughs> that's what i use every day this is I, yeah my, my body is my tool for my work um and so obviously I'm, I'm in touch with my body in a very deep way on a daily basis. And so just when she writes things like, when I remember Adam, I feel touched as though a warm gas is spreading over me between the cells of my skin. That's one, one particular passage or sometimes she'll talk about like, like in a moment of, of fear or something like it was like as if hot black oil was dripping all over her body or something and there's just some very visceral images that I really connect to and I really connect in general to the way that she um, describes things that like happen or you that you feel in your body and as a person that works with their body I feel very 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 connected to that kind of writing and those passages that she has pretty frequently. So I'm about halfway through, um, and yeah, I think I'm gonna organize some things around the house, fold some laundry, I wanna buy some Epsom salt. So maybe I'll run to the pharmacy and see if they have that. I don't have a bathtub, but we just kind of wanna soak our feet in an Epsom salt bucket. <laughs> I hope that doesn't gross anyone out, but yeah, I wish I had a bathtub, but we do what we can. And then probably read some more, and yeah, I'll catch up with you later. Coconut cream? I think so. Oh, I need to clean this glass. Hello, fellow <laughs> booktubers. This is a peach. This is another peach. And a third. Three peaches. that gorgeous dinner. Hi, I'm coming to you from a new camera. I feel like a child with a toy. Um, I'm really excited. It's the, <clears throat> whoa, my voice. It's the Sony um, vlog camera. I know Brittany Bathgate uh, uses it, uh, and she was my main kind of selling point um, to look into this camera. So anyway, I hope, I mean, I'm filming, I. I'm trying it on a setting that actually she recommended and um, I don't even know how to put these on my computer. I don't even know if this is going to work. <laughs> so cross your fingers. I was just editing the vlog up until this point. 
I feel like it's very scattered. It's all over the place. Uh, hopefully for you, it feels more smooth than it feels for me. I also need to get used to looking here and not here. It's Friday the 2nd of April, um, which means I should film soon my March um, wrap up of everything I read in March, which was three books. <laughs> I always feel like, is there a point to talk about what I read if it's not like 10 books like everyone else? <laughs> but I think I'll try to do that anyway. I am almost done with blueberries. I think I have three essays left. Is this hair attached to my head? I think I have a few essays left, so I'm gonna go and read them. I think I'm gonna try to finish that now. And it's a rainy day. We had a really sunny week and now it's like really raining outside, so I don't know what's happening with that, but it's giving me the like weekend restful vibes. Um, yeah, so I think I'll finish blueberries and then come back and talk to you later. Okay, so I just um, finished blueberries um, a little bit ago, <laughs> like, I don't know, 20 minutes ago or something. And I really, I just had to sit for a second and be with myself and just um, come to an end with it before I could speak. Um, I feel like I should be wearing a blueberry sweater, but cherries is what we have, so <laughs> it's the closest thing. Um, overall, I thought this collection of essays was incredible, just literally incredible. Um, there's only good things I can say about it, and I really think that Savage is one of the most intelligent and inspiring um, literary voices I've ever encountered. So I really have to say a big thank you to Rebecca for um, talking about this book and bringing it to my attention. Um, yeah, I feel like forever. I really do feel um, forever changed from this collection and I will read it probably many more times. Um, so I'm going to try to work through some thoughts. What I love about having a new camera is that I always write notes on my phone and then when I was filming with my phone before there wasn't like I couldn't simultaneously film and read my thoughts to you. So that frees me up a little bit. <laughs> so there's so many different themes and um, ideas and subjects that Savage is talking about in this collection. Memory, trauma, womanhood, also colonialism and like what it is to live on the earth and deal with um, the history that you're literally standing on. Um, and from her perspective, specifically Australia, um, and the like concept of, of home, what is home, where is home, how many homes can you have, transiency, um, transi transiency is a word? She's also talking about writing and the act of writing, especially in the later essays like um, Portrait of a Writer as Worker, um, anti-memoir, as in fuck you, as in fuck me, which is such a great essay. Uh, it's the last one. Speaking about harmful ideologies and like how do they function at the intersection with making art, um, which I found super interesting. So like what it is to live with a messy mind as a creative person and especially as a writer and um, in one of the essays towards the end, she's just talking, she's kind of like describing to us like her MacBook and like her laptop and what it looks like and how it functions. And it's sort of like reflecting the inside of her brain and um, fragments of things that she writes or gathers. Um, and this essay, Portrait of a Writer as Worker, is really also about like the whole business of writing and 
like this constant diversifying yourself as a writer and as an artist and then like just art and commerce and how they meet and how they interact and how they kind of destroy but help each other um and then like a big concept which is also on the front of some of the cover like some of the editions of this book on the cover it says what body makes a memoir and that's like also like an over arcing overarching <laughs> Um, I don't know which one, um, kind of question that this book is handling with, like what kind, what kind of body makes a memoir or, um, yeah. So I'm a, a complete fan of Elena Savage for sure. Um, anything that she creates, I will, I will always and forever, um, read from this point on. Um, I also thought that this essay collection was so interesting because each essay is also written in a slightly different form and sometimes she plays with like long 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 sentences without any breaks which just kind of like you are tumbling and rolling with her um in other ways it's more fragmented or or lists there's things that change from her writing from first person or um, other from other perspectives as well so it's really interesting that not only she has a like she has so much to say and to offer um, and to question but also like her skills that she can write from so many different um, angles um, I just think she's brilliant so th those are all my thoughts um, I really encourage you to read this I think like I would recommend it to anyone and everyone. Um, if any of those, you know, subjects that I listed are of interest to you, and she's super inspiring and really, really thought provoking. I have many questions to go and deal with with myself <laughs> after reading this. Um, so, but it was a, a pleasure. I think now I am on to um, "On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous" by Ocean Vong, which I've said in the past that I've. Um, read about 45 pages of I think two separate times and not because I wasn't interested in, in um, continuing the opposite I thought it was so uh, stunning and poetic and um, lyrical and just very very beautiful that I just always felt like I needed to find a better time that felt more appropriate for me to like really bathe in this book. Um, and me and um, Iggy from Literary Iggy are doing a buddy read on this one and she just got it, uh, she just received it at the bookstore that she works at. So we will be embarking on reading this at the same time, which will be so fun. It's my first like buddy read also. Uh, so obviously both of us will probably update you on uh, our journey with this one. I'm gonna continue with my Friday, take a shower, do dishes, chill. Um, and our friend Mai, who you've seen in almost every clip, in, in almost every vlog, um, might be coming for dinner, which is always fun. Yeah, see you later. I wanted to just update you that I started reading um, On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vong. Like I said, I'm reading this with Iggy from Literary Iggy. We're doing like a buddy read. Um, I'm on the, I think like, I'm about 45 pages in. I'm now at the point that I never made it to in previous reads, um, but I'm dog-earing like so much. 
like penciling in underlining um just incredibly beautiful poetic um touching there was a, a, a passage in this last section that i was reading um like involving a monkey which if you've read this um it's hard that section was like it's very affecting this book and his language i mean it just hits you like you're completely stripped open by his words um and it really reads like a big um piece of poetry prose um which is totally my kind of thing just yeah i'm so enjoying this and like look forward to reading more we're probably gonna get out of the house and go to the park and maybe I'll bring it with me and keep reading. Moisturized. I want to spend the rest of the day, I think, um, editing this, making sure, like, um, the footage is, I don't know, like, the settings are all good on the camera and that everything works. Um, and yeah, I mean, we were just sitting in our a coffee shop around the corner, and I got to um, part two of On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous. Uh, yeah, wow. I mean, what can you say? I feel like so many people have talked about this book and it deserves, I think, all of the praise that it gets. Um, I just think he's so incredible. I'm such a... Um, I'm really in awe of him and such a fan, especially as such... He's so young and just... I mean, he's the student of one of my favorite, favorite poets, Sharon Olds. Um, let me know if you... Uh, know her poetry because if you do i feel like we're attached in our souls um so yeah i mean i i can see that i can see his own unique voice but also like influences from her um a little bit and yeah i just i just think i mean also look at him like wow Shen, if you ever see this video, I'm like such a fan of you. Um, I thought I would read you um, just like a passage that I love. It's in the first part. You once told me that the human eye is God's loneliest creation. How so much of the world passes through the pupil and still it holds nothing. The eye alone in its socket doesn't even know there's another one, just like it, an inch away, just as hungry as empty. Opening the front door to the first snowfall of my life, you whispered, look. And then on the next page, he says, sometimes I imagine the monarchs fleeing not winter, but the Nepalm clouds of your childhood in Vietnam. I imagine them flying from the blazed blasts, unscathed, their tiny black and red wings jittering like debris that kept blowing for thousands of miles across the sky, so that looking up, you can no longer fathom the explosion they came from. Only a family of butterflies floating in clean, cool air, their wings finally, after so many conflagrations, fireproof. And then a little bit later, you're a mother, Ma. You're also a monster, but so am I, which is why I can't turn away from you, which is why I have taken God's loneliest creation and put you inside it. Look. Yeah, I don't know what to say. The oceans, <laughs> for lack of a better word, in my heart and in my body just like flow for this book and for his voice. For now, I think I'll finish the vlog there and we can catch up in another one. Um, I just saw that like all my favorite booktubers just are starting to post their March um, wrap up. So I'm like gonna go watch some of my favorite faces 
and let me know if it's something that interests you. Like, if I only read three, said it, this month I read three books, and almost each book had its own reading vlog, so is a wrap-up necessary? Like, is it something that you would watch, or, um, yeah, give me your thoughts on that. Maybe I could include, like, articles that I'm also reading or something? I don't know, maybe I can somehow diversify a March wrap-up. I don't know. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!